Dear brothers and sisters, from what I have heard in the readings, especially in the Gospel, the risen Christ wants to bring us into His glory, enlighten us, and give us the joy of His presence. But the two disciples were blinded by lack of understanding, sad, discouraged, and without hope as they were going away from the traumatic experience of Jerusalem. The disciples didn't understand Jesus' shocking death and did not believe to the witnesses of the resurrection. They perhaps expected Jesus to redeem Israel through the violent means. When the Lord did not fulfill these earthly expectations, they were disappointed and going away from Jerusalem. At times, we also may feel blinded by a lack of understanding what is happening in our life or sad because of not feeling understood by others, or because we are lonely. We may be discouraged because we don't feel helped by God, or hopeless because we don't see Him present. We might know that Jesus died and rose, but that still may have zero effect on our lives today. Perhaps we expect the Lord to just stop the virus, prevent mass shootings, fix all our problems, make everyone healthy, rich, and beautiful, or handsome. If He won't fulfill all or at least some of these conditions, we might be tempted to go away from Him and escape from our traumas and reality in different ways. But if the disciples walked away from Jerusalem, and even Jesus, our Lord, who is the new Jerusalem, walked toward them and with them. He helped them to understand what was written about Him. The risen one also helped them to recognize Him as being present with them. Christ helped them to believe all that the prophets have declared in saying, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into His glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Moses, all the prophets, and the scriptures say about Jesus that he, the Messiah, would die and rise in accordance with the scriptures. At times, similarly to the disciples, as we walk away from the pain of our own Jerusalem, Jesus is walking toward us and with us. Jesus wants to help us to understand what was written about Him and how it affects us. The reason one desires to help us to recognize Him as being present with us. Christ wants to help us to believe all that the prophets have declared because was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into His glory. But was it necessary for Christ to die and rise? For Him as God, I would argue, it was not necessary to become human and die. Jesus has already had the divine life. The only necessity for Him to come, die, and rise from the dead has been the necessity of love. That is, what is not necessary for the humanity that Christ would die and rise. Yes, it was necessary that God, who created everything but did not create sin and death, seeing humanity sad, hopeless, without understanding, enslaved to sin, condemned to death, and without life, came to save the humanity. Let us see together how what was prophesied in the law of Moses and all the prophets, how it is important not just for the disciples, but also for each one of us, you and me, and whole of humanity. By remembering what we, He has done for us, we are praising Him. Therefore, let us praise Him together. Praise Him with me. Was it not necessary, in the second reading, St. Peter cites the prophet Isaiah, 
that the humanity would be ransomed from the futile ways of sin with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. We also hear in the first reading today, St. Paul addressing the Jews, what God prof promised to the fathers, this he has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising Jesus, as also it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Was it not necessary that Christ would rise from the dead to assume the ultimate mode of the new, glorified human existence in the divinity? Let us look together what the prophet Isaiah sings about Jesus in the fourth song of the servant. Was it not necessary that the suffering servant of the Lord would be so inhumanly disfigured on the cross so that the humanity and we may be transfigured in him? Was it not necessary that Christ would be despised so that we could welcome God's love? Was it not necessary that he would be the lowest of men so that, we may exalt, that he may exalt us in God? Was it not necessary that Jesus would be a man of sorrows and carrying our sorrows so that he may give us his joy? Was it not necessary that he would be familiar with suffering and carried our sufferings so that we may delight in his home? Was it not necessary that he would be a someone being punished and struck with affliction by God, whereas he was being wounded for our rebellions, crushed because of our guilt, the punishment reconciling us fell on him so that we may be healed by his bruises? Was it not necessary that Jesus would take our apostasy and rebellion upon himself so that we may return in God to God in peace? Was it not necessary that when ill-treated and afflicted, he never opened his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep dumb before its shearers, he never opened his mouth so that we may again communicate lovingly to God? Was it not necessary that forcibly, after sentence he was taken, so that our sentence of condemnation would be taken away and shredded in pieces. Was it not necessary that he would be cut off from the land of the living on the cross, so that we may join the true land of the living, which is heaven? Was it not necessary that Jesus would be struck dead for his people's rebellion, so that we may be his people in loving obedience? Was it not necessary that our Lord would be crucified and given grave with the wicked, although he had done no violence, had spoken no deceit, so that the violent and deceitful could be forgiven and live in God? Was it not necessary that Jesus would be crushed with pain and give his life as a sin offering so that he may see his offspring and that we may be the offspring of the living God? Was it not necessary that, in the words of our Heavenly Father, the upright one, my servant will, will justify many by taking their guilt on himself, so that our guilt may be taken away, and we may be privileged to become the upright servants of God? Was it not necessary that the Son of the Father would expose himself to death, whereas he was bearing the sin of many, my and your sins, our sins, so that we may truly live? Was it not necessary that his Father would raise up Jesus, because it was impossible for him to be held in the power of death, so that with him and through him we may rise as well, as St. Peter says? Was it not necessary that David's prophecy, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, would be fulfilled in Jesus, so that the souls of the dead may not feel abandoned, but be raised to life and welcomed into heaven? 
Was it not necessary that God and man Jesus would ascend into heaven in his body so that one day we in our bodies may also be in heaven? Was it not necessary that Jesus was filled in the resurrection with the gladness of God's presence in his humanity so that the humanity and each one of us already here and one day fully may be filled with the gladness of the presence of God? Was it not necessary that Jesus would be filled with the Holy Spirit in his humanity so that he may send his Holy Spirit from heaven upon all those who ask him? So was it not necessary, the Lord said to his disciples, that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory so that even and in his and any suffering, the humanity and all of us may enter into God's glory. Moreover, was it not necessary that after opening the scriptures to the disciples, Christ would be recognized in the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist, so that the disciples and we would regain hope, joy in his presence, clear understanding, and faith in the Lord and his resurrection. Finally, was it not necessary that the disciples went to share their story to the apostles? They met Jesus. Have you met him? Has he spoken to you in the liturgy of the word? Have you adored, received, and recognized him in the breaking of the bread, that is, the Eucharist? If yes, it is necessary that you share with others your experience of Jesus' word, Eucharistic presence of him who is the true bread come from heaven. In conclusion, dear brothers and sisters, as the two disciples were going away from the painful experience of Jerusalem in sadness, Jesus accompanied them and said to them, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Was it not necessary not only for the disciples, but for all humanity, for each one of us, that Jesus suffered so that even if we are suffering, we may enter into his glory, into his joy, and understand our life and history in the light of the faith, just as it happened to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus and in Jerusalem. May the Lord set his word in our hearts and set our hearts on fire and help us to recognize him in the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist. Amen.